What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee, and I'm here to talk to you about Two Loss Distribution. They are one of the most technologically advanced distributors in music. They distribute to more stores than any of the distributors around. They distribute, uh, they give you 100% of your royalties. They only charge you $3 a month, and you have an instant option to get an advance from these guys. So if you're watching this and you want to be in the music business and you're trying to figure out how to get help, I'm here to tell you, go to twoloss.com and use the word GODS as your coupon code and you get the first three months free. Peace and love, it's Rick the Negotiator. And this is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. And welcome to Artist Spotlight. Let's go. And today we have a, a special guest, uh, this guest actually came in with plaques already, you know. Yeah. We know we save our spotlight for people on the come up also, but this guy already got some he already got some weight under his name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was signed by my bro. I seen Jay coming up when he was Archie's assistant. Like we I seen him come up. So when he first got over the island and he hit me about you, it was on some like big bro shit, like, yo, bro, yeah. I just signed his artist, check him out. I'm like, nigga, I'm just happy that you killing this shit, nigga. I'm just I'm happy sure. for you. So I'm just happy for Jay. I'm happy for everybody involved. But we got Sleazy's World in here. Let's go. I said it right, right? Yeah, yeah. I ain't wanna, you know, you know, sometimes you read it and you like, nigga might say, no, 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 it's Sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, bro. My, my bad. Some you know, be some crazy shit. shit. Like, no, 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 no. That's not how I pronounce Sle Sleazy. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, man, we, <laughs> by the way, shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to Two Loss Distribution. If you were di distributed by anybody, if you weren't on a major, I would definitely push you to go with Two Loss, but mm -hmm. you're already on a major. So yeah. I want to I wanna talk to you about Sleazy world like i want to talk how did you come up with the name like how did you create the character that is this like i see the chain on and i'm like what i like artists to understand when we do this show is that it's all about branding it's all about yeah. character development like they be thinking like because there's a kid watching you that's like oh he looking at you right now he's like if i just had a chain yeah if i just had a chain i'm telling you i could be him and it's like nah bro like he he mm -hmm. it's I've been listening to your interviews. You really understand nah, for sure. the weight of what you're doing. I mean, like, so when I first started, um, before I even could afford a chain, like, I couldn't afford a lot of shit. I couldn't afford designer when I first started making music, when I first started dropping. So, like, I get, like, my own clothes made, like, yeah. printed with sleazy on it. Because mm. I want motherfuckers, to, like you say, it was branding. It was yep. a part of branding. So, it's like, sure. motherfuckers see me, they see what I got on, they're going to automatically, like, in their head, they're going to read that sleazy, yes. you know? Then when they ask who you is, I'm going to tell them. So exactly. it's going to be stuck in their head. Like, mm. now they see it and they hear it. Yeah. So, like, I always did that shit coming up. Like, that's how I did it to, like, brand myself, you know, mm -hmm. before I could, like, buy a jury. But, like, mm -hmm. if you see all my pieces, all my pieces got, like, it say sleazy on them. Got you. So, yeah. So, you're from Kansas City. Shout out to Funny Marco. Funny yeah. Marco, that's my kid. That's like yeah. my little brother. Like yeah, I raised my him dog. I just, from Kansas City. Yeah. I had him when he had thirty thousand followers when he when he was like trying to figure out he's coming to Atlanta. He came and he lived with me. Yeah. But um, so I know. First of all, y'all got the Kansas City Chiefs, so I already know that y'all, you know, y'all walking around like yeah. <laughs> just puffed it's out. Uh, like uh -huh. we got the Michael Jordan of football, nigga. Max, but um, yeah. you're from Kansas City, and I this show is for artists who dream. This show is to give the artists an inside. What I like about you being from Kansas City is that you didn't come in here like with Kansas City as a burden. Yeah. You know, some people when you meet them, they're like, "I'm like, where you from? I'm from Iowa," and it's like, and it's nothing there. Or I'm from Little Rock, and it's like, nah, dog, you could be. That's even better that yeah. you're from a little city. You could create what's cool to them. Like, yeah. you and it's a lot there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot there. For yeah. Me. So how did you, so when you started when you coming out of Kansas City, what was your thought process like? Were you thinking to yourself like, I'm from this small place, so I gotta go to New York, or were you thinking to yourself like, I'm got to light this bitch up? Like, what was your thought process going into it? Uh, my thought process was really like, I'm from this small place, so how do I get these other places to notice me? Got you. you and what know? was your well, how did you what was your thought process? What was you thinking? What was your plan? Um. To really just like promote my music as much and my myself and my music as much as I can, you yeah. know. I feel like my fans played a big part. Like the fans that started in the city, they had traveled and they had played my music around other people. Like, mm. oh yeah, this is the artist that's popping in my city right here. Ooh. Got you. And then they had put it on their playlist, and now they playing it around their friends playlist. and their fans. So it's like 
your fans is gonna travel your music for you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They Especially, take pride in yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So they're yep. gonna travel it for you. So I feel like that was a big part of my success right there. Like my fans was just playing my music for other people and yeah. they became fans of me and they got the playing it for other people and it just got the traveling from different cities. Then I'm from Grand Rapids, so it's like that city already, like I'm I'm originally born okay. in Grand Rapids. So you know so what give I'm me give me the difference between Grand Rapids and Kansas City, like for someone that doesn't know what that means. Shit, Grand Rapids is smaller. It's even harder to make it out. <laughs> That's it's even harder. Yeah, it's even harder to make it out. So like, I was I was born there and I was raised in Kansas City, Missouri. So Got it's you. like, I'm coming out of the, both of these spots. Small cities, like, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to make it out of. I be thinking about it all the time. Like, yeah. I was blessed to make it. You but know you also did something very smart. Yeah. You named your first record that blew you up after you. I'm telling you, everything that's what I'm I was saying. Doing like, was it, that's after. smart, bro. Like, but I, but people watching this don't understand that. I'm like, yeah. bro, you have to incorporate as much of the brand into everything, everything you do, you yeah. do everything as much as do. possible. Because if you don't, nigga, you leaving chance for a misconception, right? Like, if you look at all my mixtapes before I signed the deal, they all got my name in it. My first project I dropped was called Big Sleeves, and then mm. I dropped The Sleazy Way. And then mm. my last one before I signed was called Sleazy. Got you. So, like, everything I was doing, Coming I was putting my name. brand. Yeah. Yeah. I always, tell, I always <laughs> use Mike Jones as an example. Like, yeah. who? Mike Jones. Like, you had to know his name. Like, yeah. you had to know his phone number. Like, he would, like, rap his phone number. I'm like, I know it feels small, but when you're from a small place, you kind of got to do those yeah. little things yeah. to give yourself an edge in the big world we live in. Because you don't have a... It ain't like I could say, oh, he from... Like, I was just at the Billboard event, and Playboy Cardi came out, you know? And he goes, at the end of his speech, he goes, shout out to Atlanta. And it's like, as many people might not know, Cardi is from Atlanta. He from the South Side. It's like, that identity gives him something. Because you like, in our world, like, where did he come from? Yeah. Like, where the fuck did you come from? Like, how did you? Because it almost is like fans getting mad. Like, like you almost imposed on their life. Like, yeah. how dare you make a record and you popping out? I, don't, I ain't never heard of you. I ain't never. <laughs> nah, it'd be like, be like nah, that. be like that. Like, you know what I'm like saying? Like, you sure. got to come out, like, with the almost, like, with the audaciousness of, like, Nah, nigga, this sleazy flow, nigga. Yeah. Yeah, nigga, nigga, that's my shit now, nigga. I yeah. named myself after it. Now, when y'all do it, y'all doing me. Imagine the Migos would have did Migo flow. Yeah. And they did the shit they was doing. Like, think it was like all branding, bro. Mm -hmm. I just love that you brand brand yourself. I want to ask you a question. What was the difference between when you were indie and when you signed to a major? Like, I just want to see your perspective. I feel like. Um... And you could talk about the goods and the bads, like the, the negative and the positive from both sides. I feel like it was, for me, it was like, I ain't even peep until like, I start getting deep into it, but like, it was freedom, but I didn't realize how much freedom I had until I signed. Indie. Yeah, so it's like, when I first signed, I still thought I had freedom, but the whole yeah. time I didn't. They watching you. Yeah. It's like they it's like they in the bird's eye view. Yeah, so it's like, even when yeah. I first dropped Sleazy Flow, I dropped probably like four videos that same month. Mm. Once you get into a label, it's so much more shit that come with it. Yeah. Where it's like, you can't just do that. Yeah. It's like, you got to hit the algorithm. It's certain times you yeah. can drop. Now you watching like who dropping on this day. Who yeah. did, Like when I was independent, shit, didn't matter. I didn't give a fuck who was dropping. I don't give a fuck if it was Sunday. I'm dropping yeah. if I want to drop. And it was like, that was, that was something that was like a big difference for me. I'm going to tell you something. And Ron, Jay, Matina, none of y'all don't get mad at me. Do it your way. Do it yeah. your way. Let me tell you something. I just I saw Lee Chopper last night. I signed Lee Chopper, mm -hmm. and I told the story of like when I signed him. You know, like when you sign to a major label, and like for me it was really frustrating being at a major because once we acquired, I was like, nigga, it's almost like acquiring a business, right? It's like mm -hmm. if you acquire a business, allow that business to, to be do what, do. what it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the music business, we acquire you now. We like, no, 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 you got to play by our rules. And I feel like a big part of that. It's like I kind of understand it, but I still don't think it's smart. It's you know what it is. It's it's smart, but it's only smart after you got into a place, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, why are you competing with the little babies of the world? Because your label thinks like that. Your label mm -hmm. is like we're competing against Drake and Wiz. But when you were independent, you was like, nigga, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to yeah. get out of here. Yeah. Like nigga, I'm <laughs> trying to get I'm trying to show Kansas City got something. So now when you're part of a bigger system, so when I signed Chopper we was gonna release his first record. And it was like, you know, in the business, they like, we're releasing it Thursday night at 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. And Chopper was like, nah, we doing it, we gonna do it Friday afternoon at 5.15 p.m. Yeah. What? And everybody's like, what? Nigga, no, 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 this is how we do it. And he was like, I don't give a fuck how y'all do it. Yeah. This is what I did to get me here. 
we ain't changing that. Yeah. And and by the way, we did it. We dropped the record. And when we dropped the record at 5.15 p.m., he said, my, he said, he says, he says, my fan base is in school. When my fan base get out of high school, middle school, they gonna do their chores, they gonna do their homework, and then they gonna turn on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I want them to see my video just dropped. And we do that, he trends. From yeah. that point forward, everything Chopper said is what we would did, what yeah. we do. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong, there is a balance to it because there are levels once you get to a certain place. Now we gotta, now we gotta sit back because where everybody's looking. But in the beginning, as you're doing that, like bro, do it your way. Drop it Sleazy's way. Nah, for sure. Don't drop it no other way. And I and I and I. By the way, I, and anybody that knows me knows when I worked at a label, this is how I spoke. Mm -hmm. Like nigga, if I, you as any artist I ever signed, nigga, I'm like, hey, no, no, no. How did y'all do it before? Well, no, we want to do it y'all way. If we knew, we would be having ten of you. Yeah. If we knew the right way, we would have ten of y'all doing sure. it the right way, nigga. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. we're chasing the ones that are doing it their way. Because their way is working, and then bringing them into our system and saying, "Now do it our way," and wondering why it's not working. Nah, that's a nigga fact. because they know what they were doing. Like, just we don't know it all. So yeah. to me, I only say that to say, like, I see. I like to ask artists questions because sometimes in this show we like to hold a mirror up, even if the mirrors are say, "Damn, I look good." Mm -hmm. You might be like, "Damn, I could do that better." Damn, yeah. let me do because the mirror is up. But when I'm looking at you and I'm watching you, I'm like, "Yo, bro, whatever you do." keep doing it your way yeah. and the powers that be ain't gonna like that not because sure. they care about numbers but if this is not about numbers right now this is about you having a career yeah. and the only way you're gonna have a career is if you get at least four to five more real urban kits that like have went gold platinum and now all of a sudden you can say okay now let's measure but nah, nigga, don't stop me from doing it Sleazy's mm -hmm. way, my nigga, because Sleazy's way got us this way nah, for sure. and by the time you do it they way, they way, they way, they way and it don't work they send you home like it was you. Yeah, now nah, that's a fact. And then, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like, I feel like, yeah, that's a big problem in the industry right now. But um, it is what it is. I feel yeah. like you just gotta, you gotta go through it and learn yourself. Yeah, for you know sure. what I'm saying? Um, yeah, just for sure. you gotta learn yourself. So, so we, you dropped Sleazy's World. You dropped a couple projects since then. Where are you right now? Like, I'm talking to you like I'm talking to Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't talking to Bill Belichick. I'm talking to Tom Brady. Yeah. Where are you in your career right now that you're saying, here's the next steps that I got to make because this is what I got to do for my own legacy? Uh, Basically, what you were saying, just, just getting back to, like, doing it my way. You yeah. Know? Um, I feel like when I first signed my deal, I'm thinking, like, I mean, when you – when you coming from nothing and you signing the deal to a label, you thinking, all right, boom, you gonna automatically think they know what they doing. Of course, for you. <laughs> so it's like when I signed my deal, I sat back and gave had them to, and let them get like yes. I gave them the charge. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, all right, y'all do y'all shit. You know, but I didn't pay attention to where it's like. Nah, you still gotta do it, Joey. Yeah. You still gotta do it. Yeah. So it'll take the fun out of it. And it uh it'll just like you you'll start losing the connection with your fans yes. that way too. I'm glad you went so there. it's like I feel like the next step for me is just getting back to doing it my way. Yeah. How I was doing yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? You should drop an album called Sleazy's Way. Yeah. Sleazy's like way. like on some Carlitos way shit. Yeah. Like on some like, like Sinatra. I did it like, my way. Like Sleazy's I did it my way. way. I'm telling you, but like really like but like define it though. Yeah. Define what Sleazy's way is, right? This is Sleazy's way of dropping music. This is how Sleazy does it, right? Mm -hmm. Which almost to a point where other people want to adapt that. Like, nah, I want to be do hard. Sleazy. Like imagine yeah. a nigga in the office saying, I want to do a Sleazy's way. Yeah. Because that way working. You know what <laughs> I'm trying working. to say? That That'd way working. Tough. And then also brands, but you should definitely drop an album called Sleazy's way. Yeah. And I mean, and, no, 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 Aaron. <laughs> Yo, fam. Fam. <laughs> you know, sometimes nigga by the camera got to yeah. say, I got one to know, Aaron. <laughs> I want to go to the beginning for a second. Go ahead. <laughs> what made you delve into music in the first place? Uh, I f See, like, my family come from music. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I, like, I know, like, my, uh, my dad, his mama, like, so my dad, he from Detroit, and, like, his mama and daddy was, like, um... A part of like Motown, like Motown oh, wow. records, and they'll sign to that shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I was growing up, my dad used to always like freestyle for us. And then he used to have me and my my brother that's like right above me, like rap battle and shit like that. But uh, my first time actually making a song, I was in the shelter and shit. Me, my mom, you and my in the brother. Shelter? Yeah, yeah, we was in the shelter and we had made a song up in the uh the Hold bathroom. On. What? 
Yeah. You said a song in the bathroom? Yeah, yep. Like doing a Nah, nah. Like my, my older brother on my dad's side, he had gave us some studio equipment. So like me, it was me, my mom, and my brother right above me. And then I had a younger brother. She just had a baby. And we was all living in the shelter. Um, and yeah, we had set the little studio equipment up in the bathroom in the shelter. That's when we made our first song. But like after we got out the shelter, we just kept making music mm. from then on. Man, know? fuck that, man. You that nigga, bro. Real yeah. talk. Nah, man, you that nah, nigga, bro. Nah, real talk. Nah, nah, That's nigga, a real, nah, one real talk. You, you, you trying to dab you, my nigga. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 nah, yeah, real yeah, talk, yeah. bro. Like, you made, your, you made your first record in the shelter? Yeah. You know what I mean? People right now, I'll find an excuse. I don't got studio. I don't got an engineer. I don't got this. Nigga, you, this what I'm, I gotta give you props because you showing. Nah, for sure. Ain't no excuse, bro. Nah, for sure. It's no excuse to do this shit, bro. It's not. It's, it's really none, not bro. No excuse. How, how it's, was the song that <laughs> you made in the shelter? What was it I, about? You I remember even, it? I don't even remember exactly what it was about, but that's when I, that was our first time recording. We recorded ourselves in that motherfucker. And then, like, like I said, when we got out the shelter, we just kept recording yeah you know no yeah. shelter now no shelter no shelter no we shelter can't now. record it no i'm saying you don't live in no shelter now oh, no hell no you, hell got, you got yourself <laughs> you got you you got yourself the fuck out yeah. that's what i said talent is that's what talent is i always say god blesses every everybody with talent mm. if you honor it you gonna get paid and that's why i fuck with marco too because like his saying it's a mindset it's thing. a mindset thing. that shit really powerful yeah like no cap it it's is. all about how you think yeah and how you look at shit because yeah. For a long time, I always felt like I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because of like what motherfuckers may have told so, me. So stop there. <clears throat> so what made you, what moment in your life made you say, I can? Like, did did you see something or when they were saying you couldn't, you didn't hear them anyway? Well, when I used to hear it, I used to try to ignore it. But I still feel like that shit was in the back of my head. Of course. Because when you seeing it so much, like I'm growing up, all my brothers was in prison. Like yeah. all my brothers still in prison right now. Mm. So it's like... All my brothers in prison, all my homies in prison, all my niggas, like, or they dying and shit like yeah. that. And then it's like the world telling you, like, okay, you just a street nigga and you yeah. gonna be this, you ain't gonna be you nothing. Gonna, yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the environment you growing up in. Yeah. Then it's like my mama, she working, she been working my whole life since mm. I was, you know what I'm saying, before born. I was born. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like we still in poverty. So yeah. it's like I'm looking at that shit like, okay, a job, that shit out. ain't gonna change shit. So I'm looking at everything around me. And that'll make you put doubt in your head, like, like where you come from, you know like, what I'm saying? So it's like, that should've put doubt in your head. Yeah. So it's like, I just had to start believing in myself. Yeah. So once I start believing so in what, myself. But, but did nothing happen? Like you just, what's your sign? I'm a Capricorn. Okay. Yeah, top of the year. By the way, around here we like to ask signs because <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you do too. If he would have said he's a Scorpio, you would have been like Ray. That's what we do, my nigga. By the way, if we ask you your sign on this show, that's a compliment. Yeah. That means we want to claim you. Right. Yeah. That means somebody. That means we want. To, I was hoping you was a Virgo, bro. I was gonna yeah. be like, I knew he was a Virgo. <laughs> my girl's a Capricorn. She would have been like, I told you, we're different. <laughs> Nothing is like us. <laughs> no cap. Yeah, but but nah, but like. You just told yourself, like, you just, like, nothing, you didn't see I feel anything. Like, I feel like the shit I go through is what motivated me. Yeah. So it's like I was going through a lot of shit. So I was in prison for four years. I went to prison when I was 17. So, like, oh, that's wow. when I actually started taking music serious, like, a mm. year before I got out. Mm. So it's like I'm in prison. Everybody leaving me. I ain't got nobody to call on. And it's like you alone. Yeah. And it's like I only got my thoughts, oh, you got God, you. and my like my music, my yeah, talent, the yeah. shit. So it's like now I'm working on my craft. Yeah. And it's like in jail. Yeah, I'm 12, in jail. Twelve months out. You know I'm getting out of the year, but yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. nah, I'm I'm gonna by the time yeah. I get out, it's up. So it's like I'm talking to my mama, she out there struggling. She gotta put money on the phone for me and all my other brothers. So yeah. now all her boys in jail mm. and shit. Except for my younger brothers and yeah. shit. So they too young. So I'm in a I'm just like the shit that I that I went through, the shit I'm going through, motherfuckers forgetting about me. It was kind of like motivation to me, like, all right, I'm finna work on my craft so I can become something when I come home. So mm. that's when I start believing in myself. Got you, know? you. No option. Yeah. That's what it is. Cause I'm like, cause for me, it was my dad dying. My dad dying, it was like, fuck. Yeah. Like that was like the, it was like life just slapped me in the face. I was like, damn, he had my name. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Then that's what's gonna happen to me if I don't 
Mm -hmm. My dad was 47 when he passed away. Mm -hmm. That number stays in my head every day. I'm like, every day. just get past 47. Just get, get past, past it. Be like that. Because it's like he dies. It's like he just died one day. And I'm like, damn. Because, you know, sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, damn, I'm way past what my father was. Like, mm -hmm. look how good I'm doing in life. Then I say to myself, you ain't got the 47 yet. Yeah. Don't forget that. You got to get past mm -hmm. that number because yeah. that's how old he was when he passed away. Nah, so I sure. always think about that. That's mm -hmm. why I'm like, because you were too young, bro. Like, you were a kid, bro. Yeah. You were 17 in jail, my nigga. Yeah. Like, you could have easily, you, at that moment, you looked at life and you was like, that's one path. I'm on it. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I know I got to do four years this path, but I'm I'm going to go that path eventually. Yeah. And you started planning for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No yeah. excuses, bro. Like, that shit is, nah, for that sure. shit is powerful. I don't know if you ever looked at yourself like that. Like, nah, yeah. I like, feel like when I first got, I remember that shit, like, it was yesterday. Mm. So it's like, when I first got in there, it's like, I was just in a bad spot, cause like I said, like you go to jail, motherfuckers you love just stop caring about you and yeah. you're in there alone. They count you out. So it's like you start to kind of like lose faith, you mm. know. So it's like you got to regain that shit. Yeah. So it's like I got to thinking to myself, like, all right, how do I work on myself? Yeah. You got all this time now, you just work on yourself. You feel me? Ain't nobody in your corner. You only got yourself mm. and God. So it's yeah. like, what do you do? So and when you in jail at that time. What were you reading? Because you obviously went in one way. And mm -hmm. You came out a whole nother person. Like, yeah. were you listening to something? Were you reading something? Like, were you what? Like, what was it that was like driving you? Uh, I was, was I was real. really I was doing all of that shit. Like, I was working out hella. So I used to I was doing CrossFit yeah. up in that motherfucker. I was shit going to church and shit, and then I was working on my music. I was really just trying to build myself. Yeah, I'm like I'm Your gonna take up. Like, I'm yeah. gonna take this time to make myself the better like like the best I can be yep. you know mm -hmm. so I was doing everything I could to just when I come home I'm gonna be just Ready. the best me yeah. you feel me so I was just really preparing myself for when I actually be released cause mm. a lot of times you would get in that motherfucker and you like damn I got four years motherfuckers ain't fuck with me and you would just give up on yourself yeah. you know what I'm saying so like I had to believe in myself yeah. I had to keep going yeah. so it was like yeah I feel like that shit helped me you got a big purpose in your life you know that yeah. mm -hmm. you feel that mm -hmm. I'm gonna challenge you though I'm gonna challenge you though just cause I'm a black man that love us Yeah. next chain you get I want you to do praying hands yeah. not a gun yeah and the reason I want you to do praying hands because that's a conversation. Yeah. Because when you see the gun, you naturally think, oh, okay, this is a young street nigga. And then you open your mouth and it's like, no. But this if, nigga you, different. if you if you if you pay attention to the chain it's around it, it oh. say more than the shooter. So the mm. gun don't represent but I, what you made. I'm, I'm glad you think, but here's what I'm saying. Yeah. It goes back to how we dropped the project. Yeah. We didn't give no room for guessing. Yeah. We didn't give you no room to think about what it is. And to me, it is a conversation piece, mm -hmm. but I think that there are more conversations in you. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the first thing I noticed. Obviously, nah, I'm like, sure. this nigga got a motherfucking chain. This nigga, I'm yeah. just all I'm saying is, next one, make it pray. Mm -hmm. Like make it pray, because to me, it's like, to me, it's like you did what you had to do to get out, mm -hmm. but you understood that you had to do different yeah. to go further. Yeah, right. So Not it's kind of sure. like a, it's kind of like a message to the world. It's like. Today, dog, I'm like, I got my father on my neck. It's like, it's like sometimes you just want to show people. I'm like, I got my son with me. I'm like, damn, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna let my father shine with us today. Like, while we on sure. our way to do this interview, yeah. and it's just, it's just sending messages to the world. Cause yeah. as I'm listening to you talk, I'm like, damn, you special, bro. Yeah. You really are. Like, it's I something big it. for you, man. You just yeah. gotta. It's like, are you gonna answer it? And I think when you was in jail, you answered it, but you also didn't have a choice. Well, you mm -hmm. did. You could have been like, this is my life, right? Yeah. But you had a choice. You were like, now nah, when I get out, this gonna be my life. But I want you to know that you still always have a choice. Yeah. At sure. where you are right now, like, and you talented as fuck, bro. The music is there. It's just, to me, it's just how do you separate yourself from everybody else who might be thinking that they doing what you're doing, but you're different, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, y'all niggas want to make music because y'all want to get hoes. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to make music because y'all want to get weed and drugs and all the other shit. And I saw an interview where you said, my outlook my outlet was always music. That's mm -hmm. all I felt like I yeah. had. Like everybody sure. else got drugs they run to, they ran the alcohol, they ran the, I ran the music yeah. and you got rewarded. Yeah. But I feel like as I'm talking to you, I'm like, damn, he could run a lot more. He mm -hmm. could run a lot further, like on some like, little Baby did it, where mm -hmm. he kind of came out and then he started realizing like, oh, it's another level of rich. Mm -hmm. And then he started like rapping about it. Like, I told my niggas, y'all come with me if y'all want, but if y'all yeah. gonna have to switch it up if y'all wanna come get this paper or nah, sure. stay there. Yeah. That that little message lets you know this nigga, he, 
he going to another place. That got him. That gets him in rooms with the the Michael Rubens of the world, the billionaires who also. So it's like it's almost like you're tr you're telling the world I want something else. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by that. And, yeah. I, and as a black man that like just met you, and I'm like I give a fuck about you. I'm like damn. Yeah. Damn, you need a next change that like make it something spiritual. Not I don't have to be sure. praying, but make it something spiritual yeah. because. That's what makes you different. Mm -hmm. Y'all nigga, I was, that's why I asked you. That's what made me say you the nigga. I'm like, this nigga rapped yeah. to get his mom out. Like, nigga, we ain't never going back to the shelter. Yeah. That's how I am. My mom was driving school buses, making 2000 months. You ain't never going to drive another school bus as long as I'm living. Not for sure. Because that that's different, bro. That's yeah. man. Not for sure. That's not rapper. That's man shit. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of these niggas are men, but they ain't. Man, they they don't yeah. act like men. They still hide behind the childish shit. Yeah. Like they don't understand the responsibility mm -hmm. that comes with the God given talent. And, you, and you, I feel like you do. Not you know it's crazy. Like even just like you saying that, like me wanting to do that for my mom, I feel like that was just a step. But like as I start to grow more and start to realize more, it's like now nah, I want to do this shit for my for my people. Yeah. For like my race, because I feel like. It's a it's it's kind of like poison because like I always say this. I remember I was in uh I was in middle school and I'm in a class and like the teachers made us all stand up and was like um three of y'all step over here and she like all y'all right here are like y'all gonna either go to jail or or, or, or die and that's what the t like statistics said mm. you know what I'm saying like that's the statistics of like the hood yeah. and shit like mm -hmm. that so I remember being in that group yeah and I feel like that shit traumatized me you know what I'm saying because it's like damn. This is how life's supposed how to be for us. us. You feel me? Yes, So, bro. like, that was a big reason why... I feel like that's a big reason why it's so much doubt. It's a lot of doubt in our in community. In our community. Where it's like, we don't have mm -hmm. no belief. We don't believe they we don't, can they become don't, they nothing. They don't pump it into us. Yeah, and it's like, so when we see somebody else that just stand out and start believing and yeah. actually make it, we hate on we it. Resent we try it. to bring it down. Yes. And we be like, we try to discredit it. We yeah. don't praise that shit. I yeah. feel like when I made it, motherfuckers didn't praise me making it. Yeah. They got the same shit like somebody else should have made it. Or he ain't this, he ain't that. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like as a whole, a lot of the shit we've been through, it kind of traumatized us and kind of yeah. trained us to like feel like we can't, you know? I'm going to tell you, I always tell a story. I, they probably tired of hearing it. I was in college. Yeah. Business 101. Swear to God, my college class, my professor comes in class and he tells us, I'm 18, bro. He tells a room full of 18-year-old black kids, if y'all don't get out and vote and George Bush wins, all of y'all are fucked. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I swear, I yelled, at, I'm like, I'm, I yelled in the classroom, well, why am I here then? Why the fuck, like, you know why I said that? I know they don't tell white kids at Harvard that. Mm -hmm. They tell them kids at Harvard, you're going to run the world. But they told me, if y'all the world don't go y'all way, y'all fuck. I quit school. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I was like, I'm not going, because I, I couldn't allow, because you start to believe you ain't shit. Yeah. You start to believe it, and then you start realizing, you start, but you know, you start looking at TV. That's why I talk, because I'm like, bro, like, you need to know there's a me out there. Mm -hmm. There's a multi millionaire version of me out there that you can be a millionaire, everything live good, and not have to rap about hurting people or. It's other ways, yeah. and that's what I want our community to see. Like we're more than just the boys in the hoods and the minister society characters. We're more than that. And the, and I'm looking at a young brother who, if they saw, they would judge immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh, he probably on some street shit. He just yeah. and it's like, nah, nigga, my mom. We, I was in jail. My mom. We was in a shelter. Like nigga, and I still went to music. Mm -hmm. I honored the gift. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, if you honor your gift, God gonna bless you. But you gotta believe it's gonna. You honoring it. You yeah. got to believe that the gift's going to take you somewhere. Nah, then you get sure. mad at me because I honor my shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm out of, and now you see me on TV, Good Morning Kansas City, and they pissed off because that's <laughs> a kid from class and shit. But it's like, nigga, yeah. we all could be this. You might not be right for you. I, I just was on the news for giving away a thousand laptops. Yeah. There's so many ways There's to so help many our ways, community, bro. But, and it still go back to where it's like, we only see majority of the, like the people that's black that was successful like yeah. for a long period of time they was either in sports yeah which was basketball or football yep or they was rapping yep like that's the easiest way out and yep. it's still hard as fuck for black people to make it so now motherfuckers that's coming up and they growing up they just thinking like okay that's our only option yeah they think these three things is our only option yep but now it's starting to change a little bit more now niggas like now black people starting to become 
clothing designers. Yep. They starting to do way more content. They starting to do way more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're not pigeonholing ourselves. Yeah, anymore. yeah. yeah. Agree. But it's so much of us that still is. The yeah. majority of us still is. And that's know? why that's why people like you are important because, yeah. like dog, like I'm impressed, bro. You really like this is an interview I want my kid to see, my mm-hmm. my son to see because I'm like. You ain't give no excuses, bro. Yeah. Like, nigga, it's hard already, my nigga. But, like, and by the way, it was hard for me, but you said something that I want to just bring up. It's just, I have to bring it up. Is that the reason why athletes and rappers are different for the world listening is that athletes are coached, mm-hmm. trained. Like, you have a you have 24 hours. What's good, y'all? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And I'm here to talk to you about YKTV Magazine, which is the number one magazine for prison entertainment. These prisoners are sitting in jail. They have nothing to do but read these magazines and read your ads, buy your music, support your business, anything that you can do that's online commerce. They already have published over 140 magazines with 36 major artists that have covered it. And I'm giving you an opportunity to advertise of this magazine and get directly to an audience that you know has the time and the money to spend info at the bottom info at the god show holla at us whether you're artist producer whoever you are we can help you with your business holla at us to get to yktv coaches 24-hour trainers like especially if they think you got a chance to go on pro not for sure oh nigga that's when you 14 15 they start hiring the best coaches the best everything when you want to rap it's like who do we call Nobody. You gotta almost figure it out yourself. <laughs> you gotta that's study why you the gotta game. Get, that's why you gotta, you gotta study. You gotta game. study the, the game. game. Yeah. And that's why when I see artists, I'm like, it's no excuses, bro. Mm-hmm. You got people like Sleazy out here who was in a motherfucking uh, fucking shelter, mm-hmm. and his brother gave him equipment. Now, guess what he could have done? You could have said, "Let's sell this shit and make yeah. some money, and get make some out money, of money here. and right. get out of here." But that's you was fact. like, "Nah, let's go in the bathroom." Yeah. I'm about to try to rap. Yeah. And it's like, and, and by the way, in, in some ways, it feels a little dumb. It feels a little like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck you mean? But it's like, it's only dumb if it didn't work. If it didn't Not work. For sure. and, it's, and you made it work. That's mm-hmm. why I'm like, you the nigga, bro. Nobody, they can't tell you shit. Like, if I'm at Def Jam or if I'm at Island and they try to talk to me about something, like, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Yeah. I was in a fucking shelter before yeah. I got here. Yeah. Like, it's like that scene from, um, what's the movie? Uh, Titanic. Mm-hmm. When he's at the table with all the rich white people and they're like, man. And he was like, man, where are you going when this is over? He was like, I don't know, but I didn't know I was going to be at this table with all you beautiful people yeah. eating this wonderful dinner. Yeah. And they, cause they they hated that about him. like, Because he made them see, while y'all are over here making fun of the poor, I'm thankful that I'm I'm one of y'all. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't even enjoy being y'all. Yeah. Y'all rather make fun of a nigga that ain't y'all. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm happy to be one of y'all. Yeah. It just shows, the, it just gives perspective Not for sure. in the moment. And to me, that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So... What is the next, what is the, what do you have goals over the next 18 to 24 months, like benchmarks that you want to reach for you right now in your career? Yeah, I got a lot of goals that I, and benchmarks that I want to reach. Um, for one, I'm big on art and fashion. Like I'm big on okay. everything I got to do with art. I'm like super into it, you yeah. know, whether it's like modeling shit, designing, yeah. clothing. So it's like right now I'm working on a clothing brand and shit. It's going to be called Bakari. It's mm. going to be like. It's some shit that I want to like build up. I want For that sure. shit to do real good. Um, I'm going to be going on tour, post album. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? And uh, just really just touching my fans and really doing shit for the community. Yeah. Back in my city. Yeah. You yeah. should. You should. I don't know your team here, but I would. Man, you should definitely just stop in every city and just talk at shelters. Mm-hmm. Real talk. talk. To kids and sh- I'm telling you, bro. Like, like just. Now every, that'd be dope. Just every, I ain't never just, thought about. Just every stop. Mm-hmm. Just go to like, and then by the way, it don't have to be to the adults, mm-hmm. like to the kids in the shelter. Like, gather the kids up and be like, and like, imagine you walking there with this chain on. And by the way, I would give the kids merch, like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Give them, give them the Bakari line, like walking this and give them that, and just be like, just know that somebody that gave you this shirt was right where you was, mm-hmm. and and got here. I would, dog, that would be a part of my whole branding. I, I would, I would be outside doing talking yeah. to kids at shelters, like, and by the way, and talking to kids in jail. Mm-hmm. Like dog, you come from two places with two kid, two kids that are written off. If you're in sure. jail at 17, or if you're in the shelter at 17, you'll be a janitor. We'll see you. You'll work for, or you'll be in jail again. Yeah. But you wasn't. Yeah. I would love for you to do that, bro. Like that's the type of shit that we do on this show. Is like, 
that will separate you. Mm -hmm. Like, why is he talking to kids in shelters? That makes Good Morning America say, we need him on here. Because mm -hmm. it's not about music. It's mm -hmm. about the story. It's about what you've done with the little that you had and them putting that out to other people saying, this is what you can do with the little that you have right now. That's all we are. All we doing right now in the show is bottling it up, inspiration, and putting it in, hopefully somebody drinks it. Yeah. But I would do that if I was you. Mm -hmm. Shelters, sure. jails, like any kid that's in trouble, like I would create like Sleazy's mentorship program. I mean, I'm being like, I'm impressed yeah. that you got this far and you still smiling, my nigga. Like, Not for sure. Because that's another thing they don't, that we don't acknowledge. Like, when these black kids come from fucked up places, you expect them to be happy. Mm -hmm. Nah, yeah. Nigga, I'm in hell right now, bro. Yeah. Been 20 years of pain. You want nigga, me to smile I'm here, now? By the way, I'm, I'm hearing I ain't shit in every room. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, I'm here. I got to tell myself I'm something to get here. Mm -hmm. That's why I act the way I act. I'm like, dog, you can't tell me nothing. I, you told me I wasn't shit. <laughs> my and whole that, life. My <laughs> whole life, my nigga. Then I become something, and that was like... Let me tell you what you need to do next. How about no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do, bro. I went out on my own. And not only that, I'm not going to let you tell no other little kid they can either. Because I'm going to tell them like you can. Because now I got proof right mm -hmm. here. Like Ray, were you in the shelter? No, I wasn't. But Sleazy was. Yeah. Were you in jail, Ray? No, I wasn't. But Sleazy was. And guess what? He got a platinum record. He signed. He out here making money, touring and everything. So what's the fucking excuse now? Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact, bro. That's what I would do if I was you, bro. Yeah. Like, nah, I'm gonna definitely look into that. Yeah, I like never thought of it, like thought of it about like like in that way. Yeah, man. I feel like I always been like, <clears throat> I ain't gonna say I've been ashamed of like where I came from, but I just don't like to speak on it too much. But like I had like so Turbo Executive produced yeah. the album. Mm -hmm. Um, he flew out to Kansas City and uh, we were just chopping it up before we even start recording. He was just asking me like, so you feel me? Like, tell me about yourself. We will. So I was telling him like more in depth to my story and letting yeah. him know all these stories that I'm kind of letting y'all know. And he was just saying like, bro, I would have never knew that. You yeah. gotta let the world know your story. Yeah. It's people that's like wishing they had a story like you Bruh. and acting like they had a story like you. Bro. Like, nigga, you really got you a really real story. You really are that, bro. <laughs> like, you got one of the craziest stories I heard <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. ain't saying nothing about it. Like, motherfuckers need to hear this. Yeah. So like when he told me that, that's when I'm like, all right, bet. Let me open up more, yeah. you know, because I don't really, I don't really do too much on social media. I don't really do too much in interviews. I don't really be out. I don't hang with a lot of other artists and shit like that too much. Yeah, I just be in my own little yeah. bubble. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like he kind of opened my eyes to that. Yeah, you and funny, Marcos should also do like a festival mm -hmm. in 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 Kansas City. Yeah, I just did a, a birthday bash. It's, it was kind of like. On some festival shit, yeah. it's like brought other artists in. We performed yeah. for the city. I just did a birthday. Something like that, there. like bro, like it, it's so many, it's so much more. And in today's market, let me give you something. Don't let these people tell you it's about music. It mm -hmm. is about music, but it's more than just. It's music. way more. It's the story. Because <laughs> when I was in the house and I was like, you know, my family is very involved. They was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm interviewing this kid Sleazy. Where I got my kid is 15, mm -hmm. daughter 14. I'm like, you heard of him? They was like, ah. Uh, and then one of her friends, because my house is like lit for kids. One mm -hmm. of her friends like, no, he sing that song. Then I yeah. played it. They was like, oh, yeah. So yeah. my point is, is that there's still room yeah. to establish yeah. yourself in a different way outside of music. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you break an artist in 2024, if they're talking music, they don't understand it. Music is now the background noise. Mm -hmm. It's like when you watch Rocky run and you hear, I got the eye of the tiger. And like, you can't hear that song without imagining someone mm -hmm. trying to get somewhere yeah, yeah right music has to have a place in our lives now or it goes viral gets lucky somebody finds it in a moment and it's like oh shit mm -hmm. they took my song and they made it the song for football players on friday nights like you pray for that but mm -hmm. how do you guarantee yourself that mm -hmm. you connect yourself to sub genres subcultures people different things right like i always tell people if you're in the cooking then Shit, you should go be on a motherfucking. It's, it's YouTubers that cook every day. Every day, and you could be on their YouTube, but now you cooking with them, playing their music. But you, on the other hand, you could be doing community work. Like, imagine if you had a song on your album that was for that. Like, imagine you had a song on your album that was like, like similar to what Cold Tip give did. Back. Cold give Cold, back. What Tip, mm -hmm. Tip did, still ain't forgave myself. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know if you know about that. You got to be a certain age. But Tip on his first album, he did this song called "Still Ain't Forgave Myself," and he basically rap about all the bad shit he did. Mm -hmm. Like all his friends, like I remember me and such and such did this and got arrested, still ain't forgave myself. Or I remember this dude got killed, still ain't forgave myself. So imagine if you had a song speaking mm -hmm. about, nigga, I'm in the shelter, 
mom this we getting this mm -hmm. we doing this and nigga we still came out that's what ole ole is <laughs> so then mm -hmm. okay so then that's it so then let's take yeah. that and now you take that and you play it for a room full of kids like you mm -hmm. right and then let them tell their stories like now you're putting a light on this kid is 15 and mm -hmm. he's saying my dad's in jail mom's this and this now people looking like damn you become way bigger than just a rapper. Mm -hmm. You become a vessel for inspiration, freedom, like opening doors, like connecting, like you become that. And at that moment, your music becomes bigger. Mm -hmm. Then your music becomes bigger, but you become bigger. Not for and sure. if you're bigger than your music, nigga, shit. Yeah. That's the ultimate win. You know, that's, that's the ultimate, ultimate goal. Win. Beyonce's goal, bigger sure. than her music. If you yeah. look at all the stars, they're bigger than their music. They actually make the music feel bigger. Mm -hmm. Rather than in the old, the new music business, they're like, he has a gold record. That's how they measure him. Oh, he went platinum today. Mm -hmm. That, oh, he has to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Not in the world of streaming. Mm -hmm. We don't even know who the people are listening. We don't even know why they listening. We don't even know why they connected. Mm -hmm. You got to tell them why to connect. And if you do it that, I'm telling you. Now imagine somebody seeing you on academics, and now it's like Sleazy's world was in a shelter. People gonna, people gonna be in the comments. Oh, this nigga with this big ass chain on, boom, boom, boom. Then it becomes, oh, he was one of them. Oh, that's even, that's yeah. fire, bro. Yeah. You, sh it's different now. It's not. Yeah. I'm not flexing on y'all. Yeah. I'm showing y'all the possibilities of what I, what y'all could be if y'all apply yourself. And what can you do today? Fuck being in the shelter. Fuck. I know you feel like you waiting to get out the shelter. You waiting to this, but I was in the shelter. Nigga, we went in the bathroom and yeah. made a song. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no excuses and ain't nobody coming to save us. I save us. Nah, for sure. I save us. Like, and I, that's why I feel like when you feel us, like, I always like, man, I got, I retired at when I, when I turned 40, I retired. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I gave my family 100K and I was like, I just gave everybody money and I was like, I'm retired. And I was like, like an hour later, I was like, oh, I'm coming out of retirement now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no real talk. I'm like, <laughs> no real talk. I'm like, my first chapter of my career, like I compared it to Kobe. Like yeah. when I wore number eight, it was about y'all. Now I'm gonna go wear number 24 That's and right. it's about the world. Mm -hmm. I wanna help as many people as I can help. And I wanted to, and I don't think I can go out and help people with y'all, cause y'all motherfuckers will be out there like, he ain't did shit for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know how family is, right? You yeah. ain't did shit for us. Your mama's still living. Nope, mama in the mansion. Mom drives a Range Rover. Like you can't, my sister lives in the mansion. Like now I, I've got y'all straight. I want to go help the world. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I'm at now with doing this. So my interviews ain't about like bragging on how much money you made. Mm -hmm. That's cool, my nigga. Mm -hmm. My interviews for people like Mos Moski right there, Muhammad, who's like, who got a dream? I'm like, nigga, you looking at you. He looked mm -hmm. like he could be your little brother right now, little Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. He like he could be your little brother right now. He got a dream. <laughs> My shit is for him. Yeah. I want people like I, if you if you want the low vibrational how he did this, nigga, I ain't that guy for you. Mm -hmm. I, I I know the I know the power of poison. Mm -hmm. I can't put that out there. And by the way, pe bad good people do bad shit sometimes. To get out of the bad situation, mm -hmm. my nigga. I I did too. I used to sell drugs. I used to do all types of fuck shit. Mm -hmm. But I got robbed, and God was like. You want to go chase your dream for real now? And I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I had a gun in my head. I'm like, I hear you. Get me out of this. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, bro, because it's possible. Mm -hmm. And you are you are a, a clear clear uh, example of the possibilities if you believe in yourself. Yeah, and I remember you sure. saying that your brother, your older brother rapped, and y'all thought he was going to be the one. That's the one that right with me in the shelter. Yeah. Okay. Oh. He's right over you. Yeah. So was he like kind of like your motivator and you just follow through or was he the alpha in the room saying, man, fuck that. Let's go do this. I feel like I always loved music, but I didn't love making it at a point in time. Gotcha. Where it's like I didn't know that's what I was going to do. Yeah. But I was super good at it because yeah. I was young creating these catchy. I was always the one cat like creating the catchy shit and all the good shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But we all looked at my brother that's right above me. It's like, OK, he going to be the one because yeah. he took it way more serious. Yeah. Than you know yeah but so so where why didn't he compare to you like from your if you look back what would you think it is that made you go and him not was uh, it an attitude thing a talent thing i feel like it was a mindset thing in the way we looked at we we look at life differently Me okay look at life differently um and he just kept going to jail i feel like uh well he was like before he just got locked up recently yeah I was working on getting him signed. Yeah. So he was building a big fan base. And he still got potential to do it, but he just, like I said, we look at life differently. Yeah. We move different. Yeah. So it was like. So he locked up I'm right more now. of a. Yeah, yeah. I'm how, more how long? Of a, 
Uh, he got probably like, well, he in a fed, so they sentenced him to like eight years, but he only got to do like four. four. Got you. Yeah, so like he got. So like how long three before you get right? like three left? Yeah, he got like three left. By the time you get out, bro. By the time he get out, bro, I want you yeah. to be global fucking superstar, yeah. like and just show him, like yeah. nigga. But he got to see. That's that's <laughs> yeah. the, that's the beauty of it. He got to see it before he went down, you know. But yeah. he still like beat himself up about that shit, like to this day, like man. At least he got to see it and shit like that. I was able to show him the lifestyle before yeah. he got locked up but exactly yeah yeah I, I i just want you to be like at the top so so the bakari clothing line any other goals that you have over the for next two years that you benchmarks that you want to achieve for yourself uh i really want to win a grammy and i feel like i can because i'm so talented when it comes to like music and mm -hmm. creating like even with the project more than the shooter like if you go listen to it i got songs on there like insecure and it's tapping into like females you know a female will have a kid now she insecure about her body or a female feel like she ain't got this long natural hair so now she insecure she want to wear wigs every day or a female got acne so she want to put makeup on or she just don't like how her face look without makeup and yeah. it's and it's really tapping onto that and i feel like as a man as men I love my woman the most when she natural me too i don't give a fuck about that makeup don't shit. i don't that. give a fuck about none of that so it's like the song is like you don't like the way you look without your hair done, but I do. Yeah. And it's just letting mm. them, it's giving them reassurance. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, the way you look at yourself is totally different how I look at you. Yeah. And I feel like, even on the whole album, I just got real music where it's just like, I'm, like even the songs for females, I ain't just saying you look good, babe, or you just yeah. this, this, and that. It's tapping into real shit mm -hmm. that they really dealing with. And I don't feel like it's a lot of music like that out there for women or men, you know? Another idea, what I would do is, uh, I would do... I would do a series where you talk about every, you break down every song. Mm -hmm. Cause see, here's another thing. Like in, in the world of music, I always say the future is if you can't make some, if you can't be a great storyteller, you're in trouble. Yeah. Because if there's 150,000 songs coming today and we got, and that means 750,000 songs, that means almost a million songs, over a million songs a week. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's 1 million, 50,000 songs a week, if I'm not mistaken. How am I gonna listen to yours? Mm. That means you have to find, I have to hear something relatable to make me say, oh, cause that's all viral is. Like money law, hours and hours. It's all someone did was put up a video celebrating love. Now people are like, oh, that's a song where we celebrate our love. Now I'm gonna put up a montage of me and you. And that song almost became the song that we celebrated our love. Mm -hmm. She could have did, she could have said that. I did this song to celebrate me and my, now it becomes easier for the listener. And my, she might have done that already, but for you, listen to you talk about your songs makes me want to go listen to them. Mm -hmm. Like every time you talk about something, I'm like, damn, like when you say Ole Ole, I'm like, I got to go listen to that shit again now. I didn't yeah. get that. But it's because of what you said. Yeah. So I would just do a series where I talk about my music and talk about the song, like almost like who is for? Like a series called Who is for, right? Where it's like we say Ole Ole, who is it for? Mm -hmm. I made that song for kids, boom, 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 boom. So now you're almost pairing the songs with their audience. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not me, I might feel like I want to listen to it because I want to hear from that person's perspective. Yeah. Now it becomes like a series where it's like, cause a lot of time artists want to talk, the music, let the music talk. Nah, the music don't talk no more. Mm -hmm. We talk for the music now. Mm -hmm. We tell you what the music is for. Mm -hmm. Or we pray that somebody figures it out, an uh, influencer uh, so, figures it yeah. out, and then they, nah, make, they do it themselves. But imagine if you did that video. You might you just gave it to them. Like now it's like if you're an influencer, you're struggling to this. Here's a song for that. Damn, now I got it. And mind you, it'll just live on your YouTube, but mm -hmm. it'll attract an audience to you. It'll attract people to you immediately because now people are like, nah, this song was for that. Mm -hmm. It's like when Jay Z did, it's a hard knock life. He didn't say it's a hard knock life for me. Yeah. He, he said it's a hard knock life for us. Yeah. Instead of treat it, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. Now don't get me wrong, that's Annie. That's a little white orphan song. Mm -hmm. But the message everyone can relate to. And you're giving us messages that everyone can relate to, just give us the message with the music. Nah. Now, I, I promise you, little things like that is gonna make people draw to you because you don't, you never know how that affects them. And mind you, you the song might get a million views. Mm -hmm. That might get 10,000, but that 10,000 made 10,000 real fans yeah motherfuckers who are like nah like like motherfuckers that's like you can't even say nothing bad about him mm -hmm. that's how much i connect to his story because that means you talking about me 
Though I was not a Kobe Bryant fan my whole life. Like yeah. I could say I'm a Knicks fan. I just <laughs> picked the Cubs. Yeah. I'm a Knicks fan. I hated Kobe Bryant, bro, until 2009. My mentor says, why you don't like him? He's arrogant. He thinks he's the best. Da, da, da. He was like, okay. Well, that's true. And he's like, let me ask you a question, though. Do you work hard? I'm like, of course I do. Do you work harder than everybody in your class? I'm like, nobody works harder than me. Like, I'm not, I forgot what we was talking about. I'm like, nobody works harder than me. He's like, all right, do you, you wake up in the morning, do you expect to win? I'm like, hell yeah, I expect to win. Why do you expect to win? Because I worked so hard yesterday at it. Well, you guess what, nigga? You Kobe Bryant. Yeah. At that moment, I just liked him. I was like, damn. I love this nigga now. Like, nah, you know what I'm sure. trying to say? It's like, yeah. It just, that little fucking 30 seconds made me love Kobe. Imagine if you gave us 30 seconds or a minute of every song. You just put it on your Instagram where it's like, now I'm interviewing you. Somebody interviewing you. Yo, yo, Sleaze, when you made, who is this song for? Oh, that song? That song, how many songs on the project? I said like 18, 19, it's, it's uh, a lot. 20. 20. <clears throat> That's 20 pieces of content yep. mm -hmm. that drive us right to the fucking album. Mm -hmm. And that, mind you, I might connect with two of them. He might connect with two of them. He might connect with one. He might connect with five. But you just, now instead of having to go listen to understand the interpretation, you just gave it to us. Mm -hmm. So now we're listening with the interpretation and now we're listening differently now. Yeah. Now I'm listening for the Now you're on. listening You don't got to figure it out. Now, now we just receive sense. it now. Yes. Just receive it. Yeah. Something like that, bro. I would no, do that, that too. That's raw. Would. No, that's raw. That's what we do here, my nigga. Yeah. That's what I told you when we started. Like, we don't really interview. We just kind of like kick it, but... <laughs> Uh, I do this for a living, my nigga. All these plaques, like every plaque is a story. Like me mm -hmm. sitting in a room, like, oh man, like when we did Sweetie Best Friend, I was like, that's the record. Why you why you think that's the record? I'm like, I know it is because I would celebrate that with my best friend. And mm -hmm. my it reminds me of my daughter and her little homegirl. That's my best friend. She a real bad chick, got yeah. her own car. I'm like, it celebrates us. No, I, I know sure. that's gonna work. It, yeah. And it works. So it's yeah. like music tells the story. It's or we tell the story for the music and then it works. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do, bro. Not for sure. Tell the story, my nigga. I promise you, 20 series. Drop it over time. You don't got to drop it in one week. Five drop it over fucking, mm -hmm. drop two a week. Mm -hmm. That's 10 weeks. That's two and a half months of you giving us guaranteed content, telling us who a song's for. Like, who that made? I made that for women. Women that struggle with this. If you don't think you're beautiful, that's a song you listen to and you're beautiful. Man, let me go listen to that now. Damn, who we make this song for? I made that song for kids like me. Da da da. That's why I said this in the lyrics. Oh damn! Now it becomes like, I'm telling you, man, it becomes like cultish. No, it becomes sure. like you the pastor, you the choir, you the motherfucker handing out the ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's now it's your mm -hmm. church, bro. I'm telling you, I would do that. Would nah, that'd be hard. Yeah, because you're that'd really be good tough. at articulating what you're doing, and as yeah. we're talking about it, you <laughs> obviously are smart enough to know what you're doing. So you're like, yeah, I did that for that. Yeah. Telling you that to me, those two ideas talk to kids in shelters, mm -hmm. talk to kids in jail, set that up. I don't know if it's your manager, but I would say set that up, talk to kids in shelter in jail, but then also do the series where we say why who I made that for, yeah, who right? for, who yeah. was for, right? So now you pointing out who was for, and then after the end of that, play a clip of the song, mm -hmm. play the clip where it says that, like highlight the lyric of the moment that says that. Those things have nothing to do with music. They have everything. They just pieces to get to know you, and it connects to everything that's your story. And the music is a soundtrack. And now we have a superstar. That's how you do. It. No, that's hard. That's how you do. It. That's that's hard. I do like I like that one, especially that who was for yeah In the shit though yeah. yeah like who was for like because I, I I'm big on all my songs like every I know the meaning behind every song yeah, I make exactly so it's like and I, and I know a detail too yeah like, with like the thought process yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's crazy because when I was signing my deal, so like when I was signing my deal, when I was like meeting labels and shit, I didn't have like no manager. I ain't have no lawyer and shit at, yeah. at the time and shit. But I knew what I wanted and mm -hmm. I knew what I didn't want. Yeah. You know, so it's like when I was going into these label meetings and I was meeting these label people, um, I automatically tell them like, I'm not here to talk about money. I'm here to talk about like to see to get to know y'all and let y'all get to know me. So like like I can't I'm not gonna sign a deal based off of money. That's yeah. what I was letting them know. So yeah. money never got brought up yeah. in none of the meetings. So um, I play them music, and after I play them each song, I break the song down. And one time I was at Columbia, and I played them some music, and it was a song I played, and I broke it down, and they was in there crying because if they it touched mm. them that much in there, you know. So it was just like the A and R's. They was yeah. in there crying. I'm like, damn. That shit really That's powerful. Yeah. Yes. You know? And like just like you said, it's like they was realizing 
how deep the music was. Yes. Now, now it, it goes. Now they don't see the gun on the chain no more. Mm -hmm. They don't see the dreads. They don't see. Now they mm -hmm. see a human like them. Yeah. Now you just made yourself human to them, yeah. right? Like that's all they want. That like we, I would tell artists, I'm like, the old days you had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't, we didn't think being like Michael Jackson or Prince was possible, my nigga. Right. It's just all we could do is appreciate them. Nah, for sure. Puff was like Puff Daddy, you know, like, and now it's like I want to look at you as an artist, like across, like I want to look you out mm -hmm. of eye. I don't want to look up at you no more. Right. I want to look directly at you. I want to. Don't get me wrong. I, I feel like I'm that nigga too. That's why I, I want to feel like that. And your music makes me feel like that. Your mm -hmm. music connects with me. So now I look at you like my peer. Now I now you're in the now I'm in the struggle with you, nigga. Everything mm -hmm. you when something happened, I'm like, y'all know it, it only happened to me because yeah. I know you now. Yeah, nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, you got a real opportunity, bro. That's mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I would say to you. Like, those two things, you have to talk more. I, if, yes. if a billion people saw this interview, how many fans do you think you have? That's how you gotta look at it, right? Yeah. Nigga, I feel like nigga, at least half a billion nigga would be like, I like this kid. Yeah. So you gotta talk more. Yeah. You gotta get, I might get fucking a hundred thousand from him, twenty five thousand from her, eighteen thousand from him, but I gotta talk more because the more I talk, the more I'm giving someone a chance to connect with me mm -hmm. and my music. If they hear my music, they might just connect with my music. Mm -hmm. That's why my kids is like, Oh, I know that song. Oh yeah, I know that song. But I'm like, this interview will make them know you. Mm -hmm. yeah. A clip of you saying I was homeless, I was in the shelter, I was getting picked on, I was this. That shit make people be like, damn, mm -hmm. that's what I'm dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. That's why you my, that's my motherfucking new hero right now. That's my yeah. I'm telling you, bro. Not for sure. It's that simple, man. It's that simple. Anything else, Rick? You got anything? No, I'm good. I'm, oh, yes, I do got something. 2023, mm -hmm. XXL cover. Yeah. Freshman class. Yeah. That's an accomplishment. Not for sure. That's a that's long crazy. way from the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> at the shelter. That's a that long like... way from the shelter to the bathroom, man. Yeah. Congrats on that. I appreciate that. It only goes up from here. Yeah. You know, you raised the bar for yourself. Now you have to keep it here. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of the things that we said today, that's how you keep it there and raise it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, looking forward, sure. looking forward to seeing what you got going on, man. Yes, sir. Man, it's all the spotlight. <laughs> I was sleepy on the way over here. Yeah. Nigga, you woke me up, bro. Yeah. You got me, like, excited, bro, because I want my kids to know it's people like you out there. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that sounds crazy as a nigga that do music, you know. You, you be in these rooms, and sometimes you, you got to be like, damn, like, I, I know we're going to make money from this, man, man, but, like, how much poison is in this? Mm -hmm. You ain't that at all, bro. Mm -hmm. You actually really are inspiration for these young kids that can do this shit, man. Yeah. I just, I want you to keep winning, bro. Like, I'm a big fan, my nigga. You made I a fan today. I heard all the music, by the yes. way. Let's clap. Nice. But yes. I, listen, I heard all the music. I liked it. I was like, this nigga, I was going to go somewhere totally different. I was going to really talk about how you kind of ushered, you cheated the music business because Sleazy Flow didn't really have a, a prominent hook. Yeah. You were the hook. And I was already going to be like, that's hard. That's yeah. why I was going to go. <laughs> but then I heard you talk. I was like, oh, this nigga different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, we, we, well, listen, brother. This artist spotlight, we support you. I hope everybody watching this supports you. Like, please do those other things. Yeah. You're going to see please, me doing bro. it. You're going to see me doing it. That's all I want to see you do. Because yeah. I want the world to see who you are, bro. I want to see you on. You Your story is news top tier news worthy mm -hmm. it is a 2020 special yeah it is a fucking is it is the view worthy it is good morning america worthy it's like how and mm -hmm. i don't want you to miss that just because they see a street nigga that's rapping nah nigga i'm way more than that yeah and i just feel like when you talk they'll see it and you know look at jay-z he, he was a crack dealer now he's got a, a non-figure deal with the fucking nfl and, and puma and like it's because he taught we figured out his story mm -hmm. tell your story you're gonna be good for sure my nigga All thanks right. for being on the show brother this All is right. artist yeah. spotlight shout out to our sponsor two loss and shout out to y'all for watching and let's support this brother right here because he ill let's yeah. go let's go my nigga